What happened in the Gulf War? Today we are going to be talking about the Gulf War and what led up to it. Iraqi President Saddam Hussein sent 140,000 Iraqi troops and 18,000 tanks into Kuwait on August 2, 1990. Hussein had requested that Kuwait forgive or refinance Iraq's war debts from the nearly eight-year Iran-Iraq War, which ended in 1988. Kuwait, on the other hand, refused to forgive any of the 8 to 10 billion in loans. It also opposed Iraq's request to increase its OPEC-mandated export oil allotment. Indeed, oil was the driving force behind the invasion, leading to U.S. military involvement. The fundamental U.S. interest in the security of the Persian Gulf is oil, Paul Wolfowitz, the George H. W. Bush administration's Under Secretary of Defense for Policy, told Defense Secretary Dick Cheney. According to the administration, Hussein controlled 20% of the world's oil reserves after invading Kuwait. That same day, Bush met with the National Security Council to discuss the United States' response to Hussein's invasion. On his way to Colorado for a meeting at the Aspen Institute, he began his signature, Telephone Diplomacy, assembling a coalition of world leaders opposed to Hussein's actions. A few hours later, he held a joint press conference in Aspen with British Prime Minister Margaret Thatcher. On the same day, the United Nations Security Council passed Resolution 660, condemning the invasion, demanding an immediate withdrawal, and threatening sanctions if Hussein did not comply. By August 5, Bush had told the press that, this will not stand, this Kuwaiti aggression, and Saudi Arabia had agreed to station U.S. troops on Saudi soil. President Bush addressed the nation three days later, saying, in the life of a nation, we're called upon to define who we are and what we believe. Elements of the 82nd Airborne Division, as well as key units of the United States Air Force, are arriving today at my direction to take up defensive positions in Saudi Arabia. Bush signed National Security Directive 45 on August 20, stating that the United States had a vital interest in the Persian Gulf and would defend its national security interests. On September 9, Bush met with Soviet Union President Mikhail Gorbachev in Helsinki, and the two issued a joint statement calling on Hussein to withdraw unconditionally from Kuwait. It is Iraq versus the world, Bush said in an address to a joint session of Congress on September 11, a now significant date. He demanded that Iraq immediately withdraw from Kuwait. On October 30, the U.S. Joint Chiefs of Staff presented President Bush with war plans. He approved doubling forces the next day, but did not announce the increase until after the November 6 midterm elections. The entire world agreed at this point. On November 29, the United Nations passed a resolution agreeing to support the use of all necessary means to remove Saddam from Kuwait if he did not withdraw his forces by January 15, 1991. 
On January 12, 1991, Congress passed House Joint Resolution 77, authorizing the use of military force against Iraq. 3 days later, Bush issued National Security Directive 54, outlining the administration's war objectives. On January 17, aerial bombing began as part of Operation Desert Storm. After 12 days, President Bush delivered his State of the Union address, using his bully pulpit to acknowledge the great struggle in the skies, on the seas, and on the sands. Not long after, on February 24, 1991, the land campaign began, only to end 100 hours later. This was a decision that remains contentious, because it was an opportunity to depose Hussein and destroy his army many years before Bush's son, President George W. Bush, achieved the goal in 2003. At this point, President Bush addressed the American people once more, this time from the Oval Office. Kuwait is once again in Kuwaiti's hands, in control of their own destiny, he said. After 148 U.S. citizens were killed and another 235 killed by accidents and friendly fire, 458 were injured, and 92 coalition soldiers were killed, a ceasefire was declared on February 28. Six days later, Bush appeared before Congress again to mark the end of the war. The Gulf War was a turning point in how the George H. W. Bush administration viewed the United States in the international order. The United States military limited press coverage of the war, and Central Command dictated what film footage was available to the press. President Bush had never intended to depose or overthrow Hussein. It is important to note that neither George Bush nor the United Nations ever called for Saddam Hussein's removal from power in Iraq in their public statements. There you have the story of what happened in the Gulf War. Thanks for watching and make sure to support our channel.